Okay, along with division, you've probably noticed that you're always going to get some sort, well not always, but oftentimes you're going to get a little remainder. So this learning goal is helping you figure out what to do with the remainder mm -hmm. because there's a lot of different options. So here are some of your choices. You could ignore it completely. You could round your remainder up. You could turn your remainder into a fraction. You could turn your remainder into a decimal. Or you could use the remainder only, and we'll get to when each of these are to be used. Oh, so that's say. the tricky part, I just is figuring want to out. Them all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Oh. No, there are different places or scenarios where each of these makes sense. So we're going to talk about those. So the first one is ignoring it. Oh. So when would you actually get to ignore the remainder? Because that sounds like it would be really nice, yeah. right? So here's an example. A roll of ribbon is 1,780 inches long. It takes one yard of ribbon, or 36 inches, to wrap one gift. And I have a spelling oh, mistake. Oops. Ugh, rats. <laughs> so how many gifts can be wrapped? So I'm going to just give you the answer because you already know how to divide, and that's not what this lesson's about. This lesson is about figuring out what to do with that remainder. Mm -hmm. So when you take that 1,780 and divide it by the 36 inches to wrap a present, you get 49 with a remainder of 16. So if I think about what that means, I can wrap 49 presents completely. And then I've got this 16 inches left over. Well, in this case, you're not going to be able to partially wrap a present. Whoever <laughs> would get it would be pretty upset, I think. <laughs> so this is a case where you can just ignore it because you can't use it to do a whole other entity. So just leave it off. Mm -hmm. So that is a case where you would ignore the remainder. So now we're going to talk about when it would make sense to round up. Mm -hmm. So it says here there are 247 people traveling to the basketball tournament by bus, and each bus holds 52 people. So how many buses will be needed? So we're going to divide, and our answer should be then 4 with a remainder of 39. Now... In this case, if you ignored it, we'd have 39 stranded people. I know. Who couldn't get to the basketball I was tournament. Say, that wouldn't be very nice. No. You would not want to be one of the stranded people. So we just have to round up. That means we're going to have instead of four with extra bus, like we, we're going to round up and have five buses total then. Right. Yep. Um, so yeah. So that's a good case of rounding up. And then the next one is forming a fraction. So this is when you would normally say an answer as a fraction. That's when you might turn your remainder into a fraction. So there's 28 students in Mrs. Colby's class who will share 98 slices of pizza equally. How many slices will each student get? So our 98 divided into 28 people is 3. I got jumped ahead a little bit. <laughs> with a remainder of 14. So... You wouldn't say each person gets three with a remainder of 14 pieces. That doesn't make sense. That makes no sense. So if you think about it, though, there's 14 pieces left, and there's 28 people. So that is 14 28 is a half. So our 14 is one half of 28. So each person gets three and a half pieces of pizza. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. And this one to me is the most difficult one to be mm -hmm. able to turn the remainder into something that makes sense. But um, this is the case where you would use a fraction. So now we're going to talk about a decimal. And I think this one is so important. Oh, yes. um, whenever you're dealing with money and you have a remainder, you have to change that into a decimal and we'll, we'll talk about how to do that. So here we have 16 friends and they earn $348 working at a car wash. So they are dividing that money equally. So if we do that problem, how much money does each friend get? Mm -hmm. um, we would get an answer of 21 with a remainder of 12. So what we need to talk about is, okay, when you're talking about money, your remainder will always have to be a decimal, never a fraction, never a remainder, because that doesn't make sense. $21 and a remainder of 12? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> so what you have to do is um, you need to solve to the hundredth. So what that would mean is you would just have to keep extending this 348 and add your decimals and zeros mm -hmm. and actually get more of a number instead of a remainder here. So you right. keep bringing down 
to end up with something like right. this. And this go, makes more sense. Yeah, we go to hundreds because that's what we talk about with money. Yeah. Yeah, so we would have $21.75, not a remainder mm -hmm. of 12. So Perfect. just be really, really careful with that. I'm sure we'll have more to practice later, so yep. don't worry. Um, and then the last one is use the remainder only, which, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking, that seems really strange. But if you read the question, sometimes the questions will ask you for what is left over, mm -hmm. so, and that is the remainder. So a bagel shop has 138 bagels to be packed into boxes of 12 to be sold. The extra bagels are for the workers. So in this case, the extra bagels are those that are left over. So how many bagels will each worker get? So in that case, it's actually referring to what's left over for those workers. So we take our 138, divide it by 12, 11. So that tells us they're going to have 11 boxes, but that's not the question. Mm -hmm. The question is how much will the workers get? So you have to be really careful to look closely at what the question is asking. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the answer is 6. It is the remainder. The workers will get six bagels. All right. So now that we've walked you through those different scenarios, mm -hmm. um, it's your turn to try. Now, it looks like there's only three problems, but there's two more on the next slide here. Mm -hmm. We're not going to read all of them because that would take a really long time. We know you can read. But what right. we do want to clarify, though, is that you need to figure out for all of these problems what you would actually do with the remainder. Would you ignore it? Would you round it up? Would you form a fraction? Would you form a decimal? Would you just use the remainder? That's what you need to determine mm -hmm. for all five. But then um, you only have to actually choose two problems to solve them. Correct. Okay. So you'll have the numbers one through five and you'll have these words next, like one of these phrases will go next to each one but then two of them will actually have an answer to it. And you can pick whichever two you want. So, so good luck. Yep.